All right, so I feel like a lot of guitarists who first get into Jimi Hendrix, or at least this happened to me, focuses mainly on his lead work. But as you listen more and more, his rhythm playing is what starts to stand out, and it really shows that his rhythm parts are sort of the secret to his great songs. His lead stuff is obviously incredible and carries a lot of his tunes, but for me personally, I'm more of a fan of his rhythm chops, and I think that the people who really listen to him would probably say the same. His best songs are the ones where he mixes in a little bit of both, and in this video, I'm going to talk about a song of his that I think covers all areas of his playing, both rhythm and lead. And also why I would recommend learning this song as a guitar player. It's not Little Wing or any of his other popular tunes. I would sort of consider this one a B-side. It's a mix of that jazzier side of him, the psychedelic, the chill, and the wailing lead stuff that he does. It's one of my favorite songs of his, and I think it's a great song to learn as a guitar player. So let's learn more about this mystery tune as well as learn how to play some parts of it. Now let's see if you can guess the song. If you can get it, let me know in the comments. It has a runtime of six minutes and 44 seconds. It's pretty much an instrumental with an exception of an edited and slowed down conversation he was having with his producer. The song title is referring to Earth and it's the ninth track on his first album. The song I'm talking about is Third Stone from the Sun. Let's break it down, talk more about it. I will also play it and try to get it to sound as close as the original track as possible and hopefully that this does not get copyrighted and taken down. So I think it's technically in the key of A major or A flat major since he tunes his guitar a half step down. Now I say technically because he's really using the E mixolydian mode. That's because the bass guitar is jumping from E major to B minor during the main melody of the song that I will play for you in a second. He also mixes in some E minor blues that blends very well with the E mixolydian mode. I'm not gonna get into the music theory details in this video. It's just good to know the key of the song if you are trying to learn it. So during the intro of the song, this is where it starts to sound very acid, surf rocky and jazz jazzy at the same time. This is also mainly because of Mitch Mitchell's jazz style drumming that's going on in the background. It's just an awesome classic 60s sounding intro. <laughs> It then falls into some minor bluesy sounding licks that are sort of just in the background. He then plays this really great lick that sounds like it's an E minor and it's immediately followed by this incredible, melodic, and memorable guitar part that makes you want to surf in Hawaii on acid. He repeats this whole thing twice and honestly the rest of the song just could have been that because the melody is very pleasant. But then out of nowhere he plays that E minor lick again, but following it is this crushing hard hitting guitar solo in E minor or E blues. After that solo, it goes into a little break part where he kind of just speaks some words and does some light riffing in the background, followed by another main melody break only once more. After that, it's mainly just some driving bass and some jazzy style drums with some cool guitar dive bombs and tricks he uses with the whammy bar. Think of it as like a psychedelic and noisy sounding jazz. I really couldn't recreate this, so I sort of just jammed around and messed around with the whammy bar.
song then finds its way back to the main melody, but much louder, distorted, and more aggressive, and then the song concludes. This song really shows his extremely experimental side in his earlier stages of his career. He is obviously experimenting and getting great sounds in his other tunes, but this one is just all over the place in the best way possible. Now, why would I recommend learning this song and why is it one of my favorites? Well, one, the song incorporates a lot of great techniques that if you learn can be very beneficial to your playing. For the main melody, he uses octave slides. I don't know if that's the correct terminology for that, but it's used in a lot of different genres, including jazz. It's a great and fun technique. You just play the octave of a note and slide up or down to other notes within that scale. He uses the A and G strings for the octave as well as the E and D strings. It can kind of be challenging for beginners because the hardest part about this is muting the string in between those octaves. But challenging your playing is a good thing, so if you're a beginner, then definitely try and learn this technique. It's also a great song to learn because it's not your basic chord progressions or key. Like I said earlier, it sort of changes throughout the song, but it mainly just sticks to the E mix Lydian mode. It's good to step out of your comfort zone with those basic songs structures and learning something that you're really not used to playing. This song is very unique and different, so that's why it's a great song to learn. That's why it's one of my favorite songs of his. I'm a huge fan of those wacky sounds and dive bombs he does. I also love the lead work as well as the calm melodies that he can create with the guitar. This song just so happens to cover all areas of that. If you're interested in jamming around with this song, you can download the free backing track I made down in the description below. Just know that it's in standard tuning, not E flat like the original tune. And if you wanna learn that main melody part, I'm gonna teach it to you right now. Also, if you wanna learn the other parts of the song, let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll make a full tutorial sometime down the road. So before we get into this little riff melody, I'm gonna show you the octave shape you're gonna be using throughout it. Um, so we're gonna be starting on the ninth fret of the A string with your pointer finger and your pinky's gonna go on the 11th fret of the G string. Now you're gonna be sliding the same position all throughout the neck and we're also gonna be applying this position on the low E string. So your pointer finger will be on whatever fret, let's just say the ninth fret right now and your pinky will then be on the D string of the 11th fret. Now when you're playing this octave shape on the A string, you can drone that low E string when you're playing all of these little licks. So you hear how it's kind of droning while the, I'm playing the riff. It sounds much, much fuller and it sounds great. And another important thing, make sure you're muting the string in between these octave shapes. So for the A shape, you're gonna be muting the D string. And for the e, low E string, you're gonna be muting the A string. All right, so let's now learn this riff. And as I'm showing you where it's gonna be at on the fretboard, I'm only gonna be naming um, the A string and the low E string on those frets. I'm not gonna be naming the A string and the G string of both these octave slides. It'll just be way too much. So you're gonna start on the ninth fret of the A string and slide up to the 11th fret of the A string. You're gonna go back to the ninth fret and slide up again and come back down to the ninth. So we have. Okay, then after that, we're gonna go down to the seventh fret, slide up to the ninth again. So. So once we get to this point, we're actually gonna strum up and fall down all the way to the fourth fret. So all together, it'll sound like this. Then we're gonna slide up to the seventh fret. After that, we're gonna do a quick slide going from the fourth fret to the fifth fret, back down to the fourth fret, to the second fret, and then slide up to the fourth again. So that's gonna sound like this. I'll play it slow. Okay, now all together in the context of the song. So after that, we're gonna be going up to the low E string now, playing that octave shape on the fourth fret and sliding up to the seventh fret. Okay? And then we're gonna, from the seventh fret, we're gonna slide up to the ninth and back down to the seventh. Okay, so all together from that little fast lick on the A string. Okay, now we're all done with the low E string. We're gonna go back down to the A string and do the same thing we did, slide from the seventh to the ninth, back to the seventh. Okay, so starting from the low E string part. Okay, so all together it sounds like this.
So after that, he just repeats the same exact riff. So as long as you remember to play that low E string when you're playing the A octave shapes and you are muting the string in between these octaves on both the A and E string shapes, you're gonna be all good to go. So what do you think of this Hendrix song? Where does it stand with your other favorite tunes of his? I hope you enjoyed this week's video. It was tons of fun diving into Hendrix's licks and ideas and breaking down how he creates these amazing songs. Now, if you like this style of video, let me know down in the comments another song that you would like me to break down, play, and kind of talk a little bit more about. Also, if you wanna check out the full cover I do of this song, I will link that down in the description. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you next week, and don't forget to keep on playing.